Number 37. Complete and balance each of the following half reactions, which is step two through five in the half reaction method. And then we have our half reaction right here. We have IO3 minus aqueous, which yields I2 solid. Okay. So I just put down all of the rules that we have to know in order to balance a redox reaction in a acidic conditions or acidic solutions, right? In this case, we only have to go through two through five because we already have a half reaction. Okay. Always step one is to break your equation into a half reaction. So since we already have the half reaction, we don't have to do step one. Okay. Now let's get started. Now, before we, we do that, I just want to point out here that even though they gave us a half reaction and they didn't say like in acidic or uh, basic solutions, if they don't say in acidic or in basic, we assume that it is the acidic answer. So we're going to be following all the rules in the acidic solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write this down nice and neat and big so that we can work with big letters <laughs> and numbers. Okay, so we have this. All right, so let's get started. So for number two, the first thing that you have to do is you have to balance all elements except hydrogen and except oxygen. And just know guys that this is in a numbering system for a reason. You have to follow this numbering system. So it's gonna just become like tedious and monotonous as you keep doing this over and over and over again. But if you have a system, it makes everything easier. So we're gonna balance all the elements except for hydrogen and oxygen. That means that I, I can't touch this oxygen yet because I can't balance it in step number two. But I see that I have an iodine, right? And I have an iodine. How many iodines do I have on each side? Well, on this side I have two, uh, actually I have one iodine and I have two iodines here. So I have to balance it. I have to add coefficients. So I know that I have to add a coefficient in front of here, right? And what number would I put here to get me to two so that they equal? Yeah, totally, right? I'm gonna add a two here. Now the iodines are balanced and we are done with step two. Now we move on to step three. Step three is balance only the oxygen by adding H2O. So if you have oxygens in your equation, you have to balance it by um, adding H2O. And just know that for every one oxygen that you want to balance, so I'll say for every one oxygen that you need to balance, you're going to add one H2O because there's only one oxygen in H2O. So if you want to balance, if, or if you need to add two oxygens, you'll add two H2Os. Let's see how many oxygens we have. Well, there's an oxygen here, right? How many do I have? Well, I have three, but it's being multiplied by two. So I have a total of six oxygen on this side, and I don't have any oxygen on this side. So what do I need to add? I have six on this side, none on this side. So I'll add six H2O for as many oxygens that you need. That's how many waters you're going to add. And now you have six oxygens. Okay. Third steps down. We're flying through these. The next thing you're going to do is you're now going to balance the hydrogen and you balance the hydrogen by adding H plus. So it's kind of the same idea here. If you need one hydrogen, hi, hydro, wait, whoa, 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 <laughs> hydrogen, you're going to add one H plus. So let's see, no hydrogens on this side, but because I added the water, I now have hydrogens here. And how many do I have? I have two, but there's six of them. So two times six is 12. I have 12 hydrogens on this side and I have none on this side. So I got to add 12 hydrogens and I'll add them as 12 H plus. You have to add them as an H plus. I needed 12, so 12 H plus. And that checks that out. Now we come down to the last step. We have to add electrons. And we, we say that electrons are E negative. Electrons are negative, so you need to include that negative sign. And you're always going to add electrons to the more positive side, bringing it down to the negative side or the more negative side. 
Now, what I like to do at this stage is I like to make a barrier between the left and the right side. So I like to just put like a little cute little barrier here, here. Yeah, it's cute, right? Can't just have like a slash, right? You got to make it cute. <laughs> anyway, um, so I, I just make this barrier, right? And now I'm going to total up the total charge on the left side and the total charge on the right side. Now you don't have to get the charge for each individual element. I'm only going for the charges that I see in the upper right hand corner. So let's start on the left side. For H plus, the charge was literally a plus, right? And if they don't tell you a number, we assume that it's a plus one, right? So I got plus one, but how many do I have? Oh, I have 12 of them. So 12 times plus one is plus 12. So I have plus 12 coming in from this side. And now what's going on here? Well, I got a negative for this compound, IO3, but it's a negative one. But how many IO3s do I have? I have two of them. So two times a negative one is a negative two. And literally it's this compound plus this compound. So the total charge would be plus 12 plus a negative two. A 12 plus a negative two, AKA 12 minus two is a plus 10. Keep that off to the side. This is the total charge on the reactant side. Now let's see what we got over here. Well, I don't see any charge in the upper right hand corner, right? I too doesn't have a charge. So what's the charge? If there is none, it's a zero. So anytime that you don't see a charge when you're balancing uh, your half reactions, it's a zero. So I don't care what, how many I have of these, zero times any number is zero. So I have zero coming in here, right? And for water, I also don't see a charge in the upper right hand corner. So it's a zero as well. Zero plus zero is, and actually I'll put it on this side, zero. Okay. Now this is where the electrons come in. You need to add electrons to the more positive side. Out of your plus 10 and your zero, which one is more positive? Oh, totally. The, the, the 10, right? So I know I'm going to add my electrons on the uh, right-hand side. Actually, sorry, I don't know my left or my right. My left-hand side, the more positive side. But the question is, how many am I going to add? Well, you think of it in terms of a number line. You want to go from the 10 down to the zero because you want the charges to match. So how many numbers are there between 10 and zero? Yeah, 10, right? You could think of it as like bunny hops on a number line. So you would add 10 electrons to get this plus 10 down to a zero. And now they're both zeros. And that's it. You're, you're done. The final answer, we completed and balanced this half reaction. It would just be 10 electrons plus 12 H plus plus two IO3, and if you want to include the aqueous, go for it. We have I2, which is a solid, and then six H2O, and that's it. That is the final answer. Guys, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. Um, just, just make sure that you know the steps and in the order that they're stated, because that's going to help you out a lot. Okay, and hopefully this helped. Uh, if it did, click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you like, and thank you so much for that. I will see you guys all in the next lesson. More redox reactions. Woohoo! I know, but we got to do it. Okay, bye.